Welcome, welcome. Another episode, actually the second episode in our second season of Two Debate. That's three twos. That gotta mean something, right? And uh, this time it's not like last time three of us, it's two of us, your original debating team, me, Dirk, and Sebastian. Me in so Frankfurt, two, two, Sebastian two, 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 two. in Zurich. How are you doing? Hi, Dirk. So it's two, 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 right now. Two, 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 two. These are two, two people. Wow, so many twos. Maybe some kind of signal. Second season, second episode, two people, two debate. And two brains, right? Two brains. Well, I'm, sometimes I'm not sure, but yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's 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 move on, because if you're not sure, I don't want to ask you about what. You're not sure which one is missing. Uh, that would be problematic. Well, my brain definitely is partially missing, depending on the context and the time of the day and what we're talking about. But uh, right now, I think... I believe it's here. It's ready for you. We are ready to debate, I hope. That's a good transition, actually, to talk about brain and consciousness. Now, we have, as as not usual, because this is the second episode, but we have two motions today. Um, each of us has come up with a topic to discuss pros and cons, fors and againsts. Um, and after that, I also have prepared for you, Dirk, Uh, some interview questions uh, according to a specific theme last time for if our listeners missed the first episode we did the if i were president interview at the end of our episode and i also have one trivia question which i believe you'll have the answer but maybe you'll have more context to share with us on that we will see but until we get to the fun part let's do the serious things first yeah and don't you mean the part where we discuss something and i win the argument yeah that's that's cool We will not get back on uh, on these false news. Um, we know that there, there is history. And actually, you know what? We should use a blockchain ledger to encapsulate and encrypt all the past votes for the past ev- episodes. So no one can modify this ever again. Also, nobody will ever look at this because most people will not all know right, what to right, do with it. Right. Nobody <laughs> will care. That's another thing. But if you want to debate with me and if you're arguing about stats... We can do this. Well, I'm sure we have plenty of time to just, just to focus on that. Yeah, but to transition to the more serious part of the debating podcast, uh, we prepared motions, and this is the part that didn't change, uh, changing in second season. We still have things we disagree over on on air, so to speak. And uh, yeah, we haven't agreed on who's actually starting, right? I can start because I can bring up the topic. The second one, uh, we'll leave it for you afterwards. Maybe we can men- mention it already, the two topics. What do you think? So we tease our listeners in terms of the two motions. So maybe maybe not going into the detail of the motion, but the first, uh, first one you will share with us and the second one, which would be mine, will be about yes. a new hype app out there called Clubhouse. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that's like, like social media with audio. And we'll talk about that yes. in the second part of this podcast. Yes. This episode, rather. That's what we are going to to talk about. Okay, let's do this. And on the first uh, motion is, is there life after death? And you're cracking up in laughter. I have no idea why. Because, because we are stumbling notes. around in this episode as if we do our <laughs> very first recording. <laughs> That's okay. That's like, life. Like, uh, like we've we only done born, 102 we have, We are practically born afresh, right? We we never done yeah. this before. This whole it's new never. format. It's only, only 102 times. Yes. And and apart from that, we're just like fresh babies doing this again and again. So share again. So, your your first my, for your motion for that it will be the one we debate first, and it is. It is, is there life after death? There is some context for it, but the question is, is there life after death? Or the the motion could be, there is life after death. Okay. And we debated on 5th of December, 2017, 30th debate, to those who want to go back in time, is eternal life desirable? And that was a slightly different topic. So now it's really whether there's a question of life after death. The reason why I bring up this motion today or this topic, uh, is because of something I read a week ago, uh, and it's called the, it's a contest, which has been introduced by Robert Bigelow. I don't know if I pronounce it correctly. And this guy is a billionaire, um, still alive. Uh, that's the whole point. 
and he's giving prizes, three prizes, for the best essays which can demonstrate life after death. However, okay. to apply, I did look up at the contest and the, and the rules. Uh, you have to have at least five years of experience working in a similar field of, I guess, psychology or neuroscience. Uh, and you want to have as much evidence and proof in those essays. The first prize is $500,000. So if you search big, low contest, life after death, uh, you can team up uh, as long as one of the participants has that experience. Right? So okay. it's not like just random essays. So if um, listeners out just... there work in related fields, now there is there is a good way to complement your income. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I thought I thought that was interesting because where I come from, uh, well, I'm not going to say this initially. Let's, let's have maybe more of a debate. Uh, I have a very strong opinion about it, but as I was trying to be more open-minded, I try to come also and think about the other side. My natural inclination and the one I would naturally take as a side would be, no, there is no life after death. We're all just dust particles coming back to dust and that's it. It's gone. Except the podcast, of course, which will be flowing, flying around space into, I don't know, um, flash drives, electrons, mm. photons, some kind of new technology flying around. But that's uh, that's it. So, Dirk, I'll let you react. What are, what are your initial thoughts as to the contest, as to the motion, and any side you'd like to pick or just maybe argue for or against initially? Yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying to sort the thoughts that go through my mind. Um, first off, my natural inclination and the one I would argue for is, uh, no, there is no life after death. Um, also, I'm not surprised that a billionaire wants some proof that there exists life after death. This is as old as humankind, right? In, back in Greece, they all looked for the water that provides eternal life. Then at some point uh, when science uh, was the big game in town, people started dreaming of artificial bodies that will allow them to be the brain in the tank kind of uh, uh, eternal life, uh, to, to get the brain in the tank like eternal life. And now somebody comes up and says, like, hey, come on, can we start with uh, just proving that it exists and then continue searching for it? I'm not surprised about this in general. It's a highly philosophical question, and it's uh, it's very tempting to just start word picking. Because is there life after death? Yeah, I can die, and there's still life. So full stop, <laughs> uh, sort it. Um, also, the question is, what exactly um, does it mean to be dead? What part of you is that? Um, so on a, on a very abstract level, we are nothing but a collective of individual cells. So if you think about it, every cell is an organism that somehow during evolution decided to cooperate with neighboring organisms. So we are weird beasts to start with. And it becomes uh, then the question of... Uh, How do you separate li like the life that lives in you and your own life? You die, but you're beyond basically continuous living. So is there a life after death? Looking from that perspective, yes. Um, looking from me as an individual, as a person that now speaks to you and debates, if I'm, I'm, uh, if, if, <laughs> What happens to me is what we usually call death, like, you know, my heart stops beating, my brain stops working, and I'm not speaking anymore. Um, then then all that is left is what I recorded prior, and that's not life. That's not independent action. That's not the same like uh, what we usually um, assume uh, with life. So I, as an individual, there is no life after death, and I stop doing all that. There is no interaction. There's no information flowing, and... Uh, We, as humans, we tend to think about ourselves and everyone in those those two separate entities like body and mind. But actually, science is pretty clear by now. That, uh, and, and even philosophy, even the, the, the more abstract uh, um, ways to analyze this, that this is actually a, an elaborate illusion. We are not separate. There is no separate mind uh, and a separate body. They are intertwined phenomena. So if my body is not working anymore, my mind isn't either. <laughs> so there, from that perspective, I don't expect to see angels and uh, fly in clouds or be a ghost or whatever. When I'm dying, then probably it's going for a split second, an interesting experience like the aha, uh -huh, this is what it feels like kind of experience and then it's dark and gone and I will know as much about being dead as I knew about being not born yet. And that's about it. So that would be my my the range of thoughts that I have on the matter. And, uh, and I leave it at that for a moment. So um, what if we focus on the aspect of mind, which others would call consciousness, which indeed does not have a home, um, 
it has been looked into and there is no home found. There is no muscle or neurons. It's this maybe collective electricity that exists in your brain that forms some kind of con consciousness. So let's focus maybe on that aspect, which is, I think, the one that most people may want to understand it today, currently, and whether uh, this means in a classic way that this consciousness goes to some kind of heaven, which is not really what I'm interested to talk about with you. Uh, it's certainly not something I believe in anymore. It's been a long time I'm not a believer. I used to be as a child uh, because bred into this, I guess, spirituality. But as I grew up, I made up my, my own mind. Um, and I'd rather focus on the other aspect, which is what if there's a way indeed to encapsulate, and this is where I, I want to take the other side of, yes, we can have that life after death where we can encapsulate that mind, that consciousness, even though right now, to your point, it's intertwined with your cells, your physical cells. Is there a way to uh, disembody it, store it on a hard drive? And I'm saying this in a more of a symbolic way. I don't know if it's a, an actual hard drive or whatever other machinery and then reinstate it somehow, either in a physical body, further down, further down the line, or as a computer in the meantime, or as, or even freezing, you know, the actual brain, uh, if this is even possible to consider like cryogenic uh, way mm -hmm. of preserving your brain, and you reinstate it somehow, downloading the all the neural connections and the memories which are created by these connections, and maybe this this gray mass that you have in, inside your skull and somehow be able to download it and re-upload it. There's a lot of science fiction around it, uh, in books and, and TV series, but this is maybe more that I'm more, what I'm interested in, maybe this more modern and maybe more both sci-fi, but more realistic notion of mind and consciousness. What do you think? Yeah. So a couple of ideas to throw out there. Um, it's kind of debunked that you can separate what is happening in your brain from what is happening in the rest of your body. So, as I said earlier, that idea of brain in a tank, that's basically what you mean. Like, uh, what if I could take out my brain and put it in a machine that just keeps the lights on and would, would I exist in there? Or the modern version of this is, what if we have a machine that can actually scan every neuron, um, capture the state of that neuron, and then transform that into a computer and all of a sudden all the knowledge and my behavior and everything things in that computer wouldn't that be the same thing and the, um the problem here is um even if you have a machine if i if i'm speaking right now with a machine that talks like sebastian seem to have all the 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 memories of sebastian sounds like him um looks like him even then i would not be sure if i'm actually speaking to a conscious mind or just a computer that uh that that tries to mimic what it is like to speak with sebastian yeah, you're, you're, nobody sees that uh, except me. Sebastian is trying to do the the Mad Max here with me, like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the, the the fact of the matter is, um, for me, when I'm interacting with you, I don't even know if you have consciousness. You don't know if I have consciousness. We just assume that uh, that since I believe I have. I assume you have too. Um, and if we would be able to transform whatever causes your behavior into a computer, um, the natural assumption is, oh, then the computer has a consciousness. But the fact is, we have no idea. We don't know. It may very well be that in that process, something crucial is broken and we would never notice. So that's like the, the you know, the really scary vision of the future is we figure out how to build a super intelligence. That super intelligence becomes uh, somehow self-aware. We, we manage to transform ourselves in either into the super intelligence or we transform our minds in there or whatever it eats us up and it's uh, there itself what if we in in so doing broke the very the the only unique thing in our life which is somehow that spark of consciousness that we assume we we have no way right now of knowing so um the assumption, though, is, uh, so is that somehow our consciousness seem to be very close related to our bodies. There are there are um, um, experiments where people have lost body parts, and you can basically prove that this is changing how they feel about themselves. Or um, there are there is a very interesting class of people out there called split brain 
patients where basically um, they have been um, um, due to a surgery they the their the two halves of their brains are separated from each other and you can prove that those two halves of their brains think separately yes. so that that raises an interesting question where is the consciousness then is it like two people or is it like uh, are they somehow the collaboration is that making up who they are would you agree so if you look at all of this and based on what yeah. you're saying would you agree that consciousness if it exists if it exists would in that case be in your skull right it is the collective generation of thoughts and memories because it's of the electricity happening in your skull no Why not? Um, that's the thing that's the thing because part of your behavior is not controlled by your skull no it's it's, so it's like you have like external stimuli right you're saying you're, you're losing a limb but this is going straight to your neural system right it's all analyzed there i mean there's no real debate about this is there that uh, there is there's uh, it depends on what you're looking at there's plenty of debate so for instance you have other centers in your body where you have like clusters of neurons that are taking part of the decisions for your car, uh, for your body that have only a very dis, uh, disconnected relationship with your brain so there are decisions being taken in your body influencing how you feel and your brain is making sense of this by by feeling what you feel and then trying to interpret it. So you're basically making it up on the go. A good example, if you're scared, right, you usually feel it by a heightened pulse and you have that weird feeling, that knot in your stomach and uh, you feel uneasy. Um, so you feel that and you, you, you kind of make sense of the world around you and you find a reason to be scared. So your interpretation is, I'm scared. But sometimes um, it just may be that you had eaten the wrong thing and walk too fast so you have a heightened pulse and uh, you have that knot in your stomach but you confuse that with being scared because you found another explanation for this and this is basically a combination out of what your body feels and signals and what your brain makes in terms of sense out of it so it's not necessarily the case that that you can put your consciousness in one or the other it's like the combination of everything around you that makes you let's uh, let's go through the following thought process uh, let's imagine um that I can reproduce every single atom that makes your body as I see it, like like with a, with the a boundaries being your body as we understand it in the physical sense and there's air around it. And I can reproduce like for like all the atoms, all the connections. Would that consciousness be the same? Or if there's consciousness, would there be the same, again, put in the same conditions, right? Everything yeah. put like for like. You're kind of touching it uh, on a on a highly debated problem right now, which is called uh, called the heart problem of consciousness, which is kind of the question: How does it emerge? Is it a function of complexity, for instance? Would a computer be conscious at some point if only we managed to what be complex think? enough? If um, I, I would say atom for your, atom. your example. Your example is a fun one. It's like a, um, if you refuse, uh, um, um, if you if you're able to to co um, copy me atom by atom, there may be very well be something that you're missing. There's that co the, that whole space of quantum uh, physics that we have only a vague idea about, right? Um, but let's say it's not necessary. I think. I think you would basically have copied my consciousness in the process as well. There's an um, there's a, a thought experiment that's very related to this. Um, imagine imagine we we developed um, a you know beaming technology like in Star Trek. So you and you can go on a on a vacation somewhere. The only caveat is if you go in that machine, you're copied atom by atom and then sent to another planet. You can walk on Mars and enjoy Mars and see it with your own eyes, right? But your original body that has been scanned uh, stays behind and dies 10 minutes after under pain. So you basically, I, I tell you, oh, you can have that uh, that uh, projection experience. You're going on vacation. There is some copy of you over there on Mars enjoying everything, but the original quote-unquote you will die in pain 10 minutes after the process. But don't worry, Sebastian will remain. It's like the whole consciousness is copied. And most people find that very disturbing and would probably not do it because we do not We do believe we have some unique soul that kind of uh, would be disturbed by this, right? And we don't want to have that pain. And we don't believe that actually this other guy over there, Mars, is then the same guy that is staying behind. It's, it's a very related thought problem. What, uh, what do you feel and what do you think? And the reason why I started this thought process, which obviously you were familiar with in, in, a, in a very similar context, and you can, you know, you can infer that there will be attempts, even if they are mad, crazy scientists. Yeah. Attempts in the coming centuries or millennium mm -hmm. 
where we will try something similar, maybe with you know, animals first. I don't know. I think we will we will not we will not manage to copy atom by atom, but we will manage to come so close that as an observer you don't know the difference. So we will build a computer that can replicate my behavior to the extent that my wife is not sure. Yeah, right. Or um, to the extent that people that actually know you cannot really say, is this Sebastian or is this some AI I'm speaking with? Um, and maybe at some point, let's hypothetically say you can really build a full copy. I personally think um, this is exactly what I said. I don't think that uh, there is any metaphysical in our consciousness. It's like the combination out of everything we have around us and are. And so, yes, you can copy that. But it's uh, not the same as life after death, because when you're dead, then this stops. What's what's your probability uh, judgment? Uh, and this is pure gut feeling, based on the data that you have today. But maybe a gut feeling, a likelihood that we can replicate some form of consciousness. And setting aside the debate whether it's mm -hmm. actually you, and and this awkward situation and disturbing situation where you're actually physically dying, or one instance of you is dying, and then you have another one where you don't really feel the I, as in I am, uh, like taking over another another area. Yeah. Like putting this aside, right? The disturbing aspect. Do you think there's something like that or remotely comparable to this possible? And you're not going to answer, even though I want an answer from you. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to be very precise in my answer. My precise answer is, I believe we will have something that looks like being conscious acts like being conscious and we are hard pressed to say okay. it's not conscious so we will have computers that are coming as close as you can but as i said as much as i i believe very much that you're conscious but the only proof i have is yeah. i'm conscious i'm a human i think you're a human therefore i assume you're conscious too but if if we are all in a computer simulation and i'm the only freak with the conscious in here and everything is built around me just to please me which is a bit of a tall order but anyhow if everything around me is a simulation i wouldn't know how would i know and uh, this is the same problem if you build a computer that yes we will build systems that are complex enough that they have everything that is required to to act as if they are conscious if they really are no one knows all right so we have an answer the answer is yes because because if they look like like <laughs> they have a conscience they act like they have a conscience and there's no way to distinguish I, I will, I'm jumping to the conclusion then that means there is consciousness. So you basically say it doesn't matter. Well, since we don't know how to define it very well in any case, and nobody can tell for sure. And, you know, if everything, you know, looks like it, acts like it, then it is. I mean, it's a, it's a like, you know, like the, the Matrix. There are people like Elon Musk who really claim that they believe we are not living in the real reality. They they basically say we live in some sort of simulation. And one answer to this is if you don't if you have no way of knowing and no way of proving, does it actually matter? So it's like, does it matter if I'm in an elaborate simulation right now? If 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 I'm falling down the stairs and break my foot, it's gonna hurt all the same. So the only reason why important. it would matter, and I'm, I'm just digressing on this aspect of why we would care about this is because it, it it may change the way you lead your life and the way you want to transmit information to your future self, even if you don't have this I am consciousness that makes you feel that you're in this body today, but with the same consciousness, but not this I anyway, it's getting complicated. So surprising conclusion to this debate. We're going to move on to the next one, but it's a surprising conclusion. There is life after death, very likely. <laughs> oh, that's that's your conclusion. I disagree, but uh, that's not a surprise either, I, right? I think you're saying there there is a there is a chance. You just don't want to go to the final stretch and saying if it looks like it. I mean, it's a word game. Whatever that uh, uh, we could we could say, oh, something something will survive our even our death. Something stays back. You have no way of not imprinting the world no, around no, no, you. I, There's I keep, information I keep, that I keep you share. Sticking to the topic of mind, of the mind and consciousness. I'm not talking about legacy or impacting others or extent or a stimuli that I'm influencing others. I'm really sticking to the same thing. Anyway, we're not going to redo the debate. Uh, you say no. I think you said yes. And based on what you, you told me, you've convinced me that there is life after death. Thank you, Dirk. <laughs> no, that, I'm glad that I convinced you about this. At least one good thing I did today. All right. Um, let's move on to the second topic, which is not related at all, <laughs> but it's hot of the press.
there is uh why don't you share what you know about clubhouse yes um there is an app out there that some of you may have heard about uh it's called clubhouse and it's um like an, a social network that allows you to do audio conferences basically um, the functionality, the kind of functionality we see in Clubhouse has been around for a while, so Clubhouse didn't invent it. There are systems out there like Discord that basically do something similar, and I have been told that the Asian world knows similar functionality as part of WeChat, so um, it's it's not necessarily new. Um, at the core in Clubhouse, you register. It's right now in beta. It's an invite-only um, system. It's very highly financed at this point. They collected quite some venture capital capital so you you get invited to it by a friend who is a is a member of the network and with that invite you can register and then you can start audio conferences you can start a chat room basically that is uh, and you you talk and it's picked up through the microphone on your phone and everybody else can listen to this it's like a virtual room so you can have you have a bit of a stage area and you can have others invited to to share their their thoughts as well so it's a, a bit of a, a conversational tool it's a crossover between I, I always describe it as a cross between um a chat room and Instagram for audio <laughs> to confuse people max to the maximum level. But that's really what it reminds me of. Um, right now, it seemed to be the playground for um, journalists, politicians, and podcasters, not surprisingly. So those are the three people I see the most in this network. And it's, at least in Germany, massively hyped right now. It feels like, if you're cool, you ought to be on that network. And uh, the, the critics... Are you cool? Hmm? Are you cool? Are you cool? I'm cool. I'm so cool. Uh, you're cool too. <laughs> I'm actually cooler than you because you pinged me if I need an invite and I was already there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm not part of the cool gang. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, but, I mean, the downside of, of Clubhouse uh, so is it's right now Apple only, which is one of the main critiques, right? It's a very elite network right now. You only get in when you're invited. So that, of course, is also part... They do that on purpose as well, right? So you're a cool kid when you get invited. We just joked about it, but that's probably how some people feel like, oh, I'm to a, I belong to a privileged class that gets early access. And the other thing is, it's only a fraction of the people out there actually owning an iPhone. Those things, last time I checked, were pretty expensive. So it's a, it's a very selective uh, way of, of rolling out a network. And those are critics of this. Yeah. And my motion is, nobody needs Clubhouse, basically. <laughs> That's clear. <laughs> That's in a nutshell. <laughs> so i leave it to you to agree or disagree and uh, share your thoughts I have both sides, but let me start maybe with i'm going to make it difficult for you you're going to have to defend that it's necessary and i'm going to say it's not necessary uh, <laughs> so you want to argue what i would argue anyhow and then then i have to defend yes. oh okay exactly it so um i'm going to call clubhouse the poor man's youtube poor man not because you need an iphone to be able to connect to it but because it's just audio and you're just losing out on the image when today it's basically and virtually free to publish video content. Uh, so, you know, if you want to have some kind of social media and you said it's a mix between Instagram and what did you say, podcasting? Chat. I said it's a, a mix between chat and Instagram, yeah. So you can view it this way. It's an audio, audio social media, audio social network. Um, people won't have the patience to just tune in and listen to some gems happening randomly live it's not as if the like podcasts where you can actually have reviews of that specific episode or go through what actually happened during the episode or read through the transcript nobody will have the freaking patience and like that's the reason why radio is kind of dead to be very honest radio because in a sense of a live experience you just listen when you're on the on the in the, in the car at most but otherwise you'd listen to podcasts because you can select high quality content and thirdly and thirdly Oh, and indexing is not easy uh, for live content. Uh, it's similar to the point I was just making, but basically it's extremely hard to find valuable content. You again have to go uh, fall into the trap of social media, follow someone that you think is valuable and then chime in or connect when they are podcasting or on that network, uh, sharing their wisdom with you. <clears throat> so, you know, it's not particularly easy to even, and there's no recording uh, aspect to it, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so you can't go back in time either. It's like a very fleeting Snapchat shit. Go ahead. Defend it. 
<laughs> All right. So for the record, you're right, and I'm not defending it. No. Um, so let me <laughs> let let me let me try to make a case for Clubhouse. What is cool about Clubhouse? I do think Clubhouse basically what it serves for if you if you're connected to it, the the first the first uh, um, um, thought that came to mind is it was a very comfortable way to organize a phone conference. So practically, Clubhouse is a conference, uh, a phone conference, uh, like uh, like we, so many we have right now in these corona times. Um, however, due to a number of very smart UI choices, it's very easy to manage who is allowed to speak at what point, who is listening. You can you can follow along very quickly. There is there is like a constant stream of content, so you can hop in and hop out. It's very informal. It's very easy to get in a conversation, right? So you, it's very easy to have a group of people. And voice is a very intuitive medium. It's also a low bandwidth medium. It's very useful to have to have uh, um, voice instead of video because it it's it, you have areas of this planet where you don't want to stream video. You want to uh, keep it to the bare minimum. And um, and in the past, Especially in those areas where, where people, everyone has an iPhone. Well, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean that this is uh, one of those things, one of those things that uh, that kind of uh, we probably can talk about how this happens. But uh, anyhow, um, it's it's also, I mean, one one part one challenge podcasts always have is that if you're not a podcasting uh, listener, a podcast listener, it's usually a bit hard to get people into the space because you have to explain to them how they find podcasts how they can subscribe to them how they can listen to podcasts it's 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 never really hard i mean people figure out how to work with facebook which is not intuitive either until you actually tried it right but uh it's it's uh it's a there's a bit of a learning curve and theoretically clubhouse takes away part of that learning curve as soon as you register in there it's very intuitively clear how you find information and how you listen in that's upside and downside it's very easy to put something on it's very fleeting but the downside of course is as you pointed out it's uh, hard to find uh, it's you have no way of archiving you have no way of really searching in there you you joining the conversation and once the conversation is over it's gone and that's uh, but uh, but it's uh, the upside is it's very easy to find interesting conversations and to join them. And some people you get access to some people directly that are usually harder to get access to because it's right now a, a, a bit of an elite club. Right now you can join conversations and and ask to be uh, be on stage and chip in with people you would normally not even get close to when you see them at a conference. So it's giving an an interesting way to access conversation and have them. So that would be the upside. Beyond beyond this aspect of tuning in and raising your hand and being able to discuss or ask questions is actually a nice uh, alternative uh, to the pre-recorded aspect yep. of podcasting. And in fact, uh, to, go, to go towards your uh, in favor of the uh, or against the motion rather, like but in favor of Clubhouse, um, there is a podcast market. Right, there is an audio market which is apparently booming to be very frank maybe radio stations are slowly dying and and replaced by podcasts but there is a segment for audio only clearly right otherwise people would not be so invested in audiobooks and podcasting so this is an interesting combination which is as you said very fairly lightweight and easy to use yeah. it's like i mean uh clubhouse is also the it what it replicates is that panel discussion type of uh, content that you also see at conferences and all, right? With uh, like a group of people in front that speak. And with the ad addition that you can have those people dynamically self-selecting so people can join and leave. And yes, as you said, there is there's a market for audio. Um, and it's, it's kind of hard to set up a real live stream experience without actually explaining a lot to your listeners you can do live streaming podcasts today i in fact i know plenty of people who do that but you you basically have then all of a sudden a choice of platforms none of them are necessarily easy to ramp up and people have to know what to do in order to listen live to your podcast so it's a bit of a mess and if everyone is already on a common platform that makes this particular part easier to handle um I personally would it make sense for go ahead, you personally go ahead. I personally wonder what club what what is clubhouse um financial end game right so my my best guess is my best guess is they 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 saw that platforms like WeChat 
have that kind of functionality integrated first. That that what gave them the idea. Then they saw the podcast market and the streaming audio market booming. That gave them the second idea. And then they thought, hey, if we kick this off and we are get, making enough a ha- um, um, way ahead to look interesting and solve the problem, maybe we are lucky and are bought by Spotify. That's basically the typical uh, uh, startup game that I kind of assume because that's in itself, it's a very simple functionality and it's very... It's a, it's solving a small problem that I think will be more much more attractive if it comes baked into a larger stream of audio. Imagine you're in imagine you're in Spotify and you can basically switch between a live discussion, your music playlist, and a podcast which comes pre-recorded. A podcast has the advantage of being a bit more compressed and information heavy. The panel discussion exposes you to interesting people, and if you're just in consumption mode, well, then listen to music. I had another suggestion in terms of exit strategy. Maybe I'll surprise you. I can explain in a sentence. It's as you were speaking, I never thought of it before. Twitter. I could see Twitter buying Clubhouse because you would not have to rebuild the entire social network. It's also an area for some, not for everyone, but of, of these interesting discussions or back and forth between politicians and journalists. So you could actually immediately stream off a conversation. Uh, with a very simple button, right? And you could see this in your Twitter feed or s- somewhere. Um, and when someone actually, actually maybe it, they test drive it right now, they already test drive it. They they copy the functionality, so they test drive it as part of their their stupid fleets. You remember Twitter has that that story feature um, rolled out where they basically try to copy Instagram stories, and they call that fleets. And they have an audio only version for fleets yeah. since last week or so, the week before that. So they they are trying. I I don't think Twitter tries to buy them. Twitter just tries to copy the functionality. <laughs> oh, interesting! Interesting. I had no idea. Okay. Yeah. What's your overall take then? Uh, you, what about the the reasons why you would not think it's really needed? Do you think there is enough out there? Do I do. You, do you see additional points beyond what I'm- I do think. Um. So so here's what Clubhouse does. A few think really really well. And the things it does really, really well is organizing an audio conference. I honestly, I wish our current video conferencing systems have that kind of functionality baked in. So I wish, I wish Hangout and Zoom and Blue Button and whatnot to integrate audio management and moderation features that are similar to what I see in Clubhouse. Um, that is the thing they do really well. I do believe no one needs yet another social network to sign on. I do think only being living only in audio is something that's cool for a while and then it starts annoying you because you want to sometimes write something, sometimes watch a video so that it's it's too limited. And I also think people will get tired really quickly of having an unedited con- constant discussion that nobody cuts anything out, nobody bothers moderating it. So... I do believe the kind of problem that Clubhouse solves really, really well will be solved very quickly in other uh, places where it's uh, placed better. And the kind of thing that's that it's hyped for, that audio-only thing, actually nobody needs. There are other places that solve that audio distribution content creation part better. And that's why I think uh, it's too elite. It's another network, another place to 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 manage your connections in, uh, another place to search for. And I don't know, I don't think anybody needs it. So what you're saying, if I hear you correctly, some good ideas, but because of the nature of the social network, the only viable strategy for them, uh, at least as we can see it today, is to be acquired fairly quickly before people lose interest. Is that correct? To summarize what you're thinking? Yeah, there there are two ways, right? So either either you're you're actually you're actually creating a platform that's uh, that's cheaper to buy than to build. So if they if they get fast to a level of functionality that's easier for Spotify to just buy than to build themselves, then cool. But they are they are right now. I I think there is investment of a hundred million dollar in there, so it needs to be worth at least a hundred million for Spotify to buy them. The alternative would be that they that they attract new users. So like if they build up like a a, a couple of hundred million followers in the network that have not been signed on to Twitter, Facebook, YouTube before. Um, then they are interesting to as a target to buy because there are new users there. But uh, realistically, do you think it's do you think it's the case? There are many new users. No, I haven't seen a single person on there that has no <laughs> network uh, contact and some other, and like, and and 
and this is this is actually one of the key things. I do believe that um, they are not really they are not big enough to be relevant for everyone, and they are they are a subset of networks that exist in the other big networks already. And functionality wise, I don't know if anybody needs them. <laughs> I can do the same things any um, on, in other platforms right that now. It up. Uh, you pretty much convinced me on on that one on this detailed analysis. But it's it's funny because we started as a almost as a it, it started off initially. I guess I heard of it only a few days ago, and I jumped on it and I wanted to to do this. In fact, this is what we're going to transition into um, to rec- to have this recording of this podcast episode to do it live. On Clubhouse. In fact, we're going to ask our listeners right now if you would want to join live. We can consider hosting this. Yeah, that's that's actually the point, right? We are just two dudes with an opinion. So this is right now the moment where our audience can teach us differently. So if uh, we would, we have an account. Um, so we we would like to run something like a listeners meetup or anything, just to give this thing a test drive. Uh, maybe debate on stage with listeners or without, but not alone. So the point would be, uh, we would set this up. We would announce it here with a date and everything. If anyone actually bothers pinging us and saying, yes, this is what I would like to do, I, I am the, at the very least one person to join a couple of minutes to listen in. If, if that happens, if anyone reaches out and says, we want to listen to two debate on Clubhouse, then we run the experiment just to learn if that's a viable option. And if you don't have an invitation, it do, it's okay. Just ask us. It doesn't matter. As long as you, as you have an iOS device, iPhone or iPad, I only have an iPad, and that works on that as well. Um, so if you don't have an invitation, don't worry. I, I can give you one. And when you get one, you can actually invite two other people. So maybe we'll only ask you to pay it forward if there are more people interested, right? If by any chance, yes. millions of emails, billions of Yeah, emails. if we get millions of emails, then we ping Clubhouse and say, yeah. we have millions of emails, or help us. We buy Clubhouse <laughs> and then we onboard the users. That's, that's- yeah, the point being is uh, we want to give that uh, the benefit of the doubt. We want to try it. So we want to play around with it. It's audio only. We are a podcast. That's fun. And uh, hey, I always wanted to lis- uh, to meet listeners. So if that's uh, that's possible in that context, that would be even better. Excellent. Let's jump to our fun part. Derek, I have my question. The final segment. The uh, interview today, the theme is the virus interview what a surprise you look at me no no, don't worry you don't risk anything this is purely audio only i cannot transmit any viruses yet last time was if you were president this time is if you were a virus or what exactly first question to you if you were a deadly (laughs) virus which one would you be and why a deadly virus which one would you be if i were a deadly virus oh man uh if i would be a deadly virus then i would like to be the measles why is that because i could I could count on the stupidity of enough humans to not be eradicated anytime soon because there are always people that say like, oh, it's not that hard and uh, um, uh, and disease and we can do, you know, it's a children's disease. Children are strong, coming stronger out of it. And so people ignore how deadly it really is. So if I, and I would be, I would be like, um, I think 15 times as contagious as COVID. <laughs> so I would I would spread really really quickly. Nice. Um, Lovely. So it's really hard to get re- rid of me. <laughs> All right, Dirk Dirk measles. Um, uh, fantastic. Next question <laughs> for you, and you can answer seriously or fun. It's completely up to you. Of course, my questions are sometimes gearing you towards one or the other. Second question: for or against vaccines? It doesn't have to be serious. Uh, I'm definitely for vaccines. Honestly. I do want to. I just the only question I have is: Can I pick if I need to uh, if I get the the Bill Gates controlled vaccine or a Tim Cook controlled vaccine? Eric. Because that that would be important Eric. to me if I'm an Apple or Microsoft ecosystem member Where afterwards. Did you study? <laughs> you get the Br- Where I studied. Studied in the UK. You get the British shit. Yes. Okay. You get the, the British shit. Doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> the German report yesterday, right? You may have heard about it. But apparently, <laughs> apparently, I didn't read the details, but I may say that the AstraZeneca vaccine may not be as efficient for the 65 plus age group as initially claimed. And we don't. I'm not 65 plus. I'm sorry. Oh, it's like uh, you look. Yeah. All right, and then yeah, you know. That question for you, last one on this interview, and then I have the trivia question. Uh, uh, before before you move on, people get vaccinated. 
I have, I have, I have zero tolerance for people that tell me they are against uh, getting not vaccinated. vaccinated uh, or if you're missing your spot for COVID, just give me your spot. I can't wait. <laughs> yes, exactly. If you don't want to get the shot, I do take the spot. Yeah. Sure, if you don't mind. Um, third question for you. It's the Faustian bargain, uh, the classic one. I'm going to ask you, would you rather be poor and healthy Um and live a very long life and very poor. And no, that means you cannot buy electronic gear or audio gear, no podcasting, working hard in the fields, but you're healthy. Or would you rather have a short life but be fantastically rich, which means you can buy any photography gear, any microphone gear that you want, but you get to live very young. What would you choose? That's really hard. Poor and healthy or long life short life and fantastic wealth. Uh, short short life but rich i said he's sick right i said it's like just short life yeah so short life but rich if it's not coming at the price of being sick so if i can be short life healthy and rich that's what i take okay any any it's more, more fun than to be people are desperate when they are poor that's there there are studies right there there are studies that there is a breaking point but um if you're if you're really poor that is you can't be healthy enough that this feels good. Okay. So I, I don't see the point in long long suffering, honestly. I don't want to suffer long. It's a, a rather rather live, live fast and happy and uh, not necessarily money doesn't necessarily make me happy, but if I can buy myself comfort, fun, do good and uh, enjoy the life, it's better than than be, be in a long, long drive. It's just for the sake of it. Poor would mean you have enough to satisfy your basic needs. Shelter, uh, health, like because you're healthy and 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 food basically right but that's it you cannot okay. buy anything else then long life and poor because you can always read for free okay, you can go to the library All you right. can you can basically that that's yeah then i would uh, would try to be uh, one of those philosopher thinkers who doesn't give a shit but uh, <laughs> basically has a long interesting uh, life thinking All about stuff you, except you just buy electronic gear as well well, I don't need electronic gear. You know, I'm only consuming because I'm not happy. That's what okay. people do. Oh, I hope that's. <laughs> oh. I hope you're a bit happy to talk to me. I can always use other people's electronic, right? <laughs> so if I'm if I'm very smart, then people will maybe allow me to do stuff with their electronic. All right. So if we're talking about electronic, <laughs> trivia question for you: not related to viruses and health and sickness uh, anymore, but it's still related to electronics in a way. Let's see if you catch the 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 thing. What kind of bulbs? That's a trivia question. What kind of bulbs? were once exchanged as a currency. What kind of bulbs? Bulbs were once exchanged as a currency. I have no idea. Now, I was playing on words. Can you think of other types of bulbs? I cannot even... I don't even know what different kind of bulbs I should come up Wait, with. So, of, I don't do know. Bulbs? Uh, light bulbs. And what other kind of bulbs exist? I have no idea if there are other kinds Power of bulbs. bulbs. Power bulbs. <laughs> You know the the root. Uh, okay, yeah, like tulips. Exactly. There was even a war about it. Exactly. The, the tulip, tulip war. Yes. Exactly. You know a bit. And it was the first. It's the first documented uh, economic bubble yeah. that burst ever. Um, ever. Exactly. Yeah. I can't tell too much about it, but I, I invite our listeners to check on tulip mania on Wikipedia. It's all explained there. I, yes. didn't, find, I didn't take the time to read in detail, but I'm not going to repeat. But it's indeed the first bubble as we go through Bitcoin, Tesla. Uh, GameStop and BlackBerry the past <laughs> few days for those who are looking to financial markets. This is nuts. Yes. If you want to get a sense of the first bubble in the 17th century, that's tulips. The actual flowers and the bulbs were exchanged as currency back then. So Exactly, exactly. It, it's been a speculation object. That uh, Unbelievable, but yeah. <laughs> so that's it. That's Very cool. like my interview question, my trivia. I, I have fun preparing them. I like your trivia. I think I need to repay you at some point coming coming up with other, other questions yeah, for you. Fun. Don't worry about that. You, you, like, you like the rush of power. You like the one being the one asking the questions and others feeling and feeling the pressure of coming up with good true. answers. That's true, because I, I would want to come up with a witty answer. So I'm not sure I would, I would welcome the pressure if I cannot prepare. <laughs> right? That's indeed. I like to come up with, uh, with the questions. All right, that's it. That's the end that we wrap up. And I got another long episode, um, but fun. Um, always very interesting to discuss different topics. So thank you, Dirk. Thank you to our listeners. Yep. Thank you. And uh, to our listeners, 
uh, it's second season, second episode. If you have any feedback, we would die to hear if if you like the new format and what you, you, you think don't. about the I'm motion. Happy to stay alive. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Dirk will you die. You cannot if die. You feedback. I will yes, be yes. happy to collect. Life after death. You know the the whole thing. It's like uh, Sebastian would like to survive your your feedback. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. And stay tuned. We'll have another episode coming up soon. Hopefully, as I mentioned last time during our previous episode, again with Lydia. Uh, so stay tuned for the next one. Thank you. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.